Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and today we're going to talk about something called exclusivity. Now, if you've been following the news recently, you might have noticed something uh, with regards to the Tomb Raider sequel, or rather, the sequel to the Tomb Raider reboot that was released most recently. Now, originally what was posted onto Tumblr by Crystal Dynamics head Daryl Gallagher was that the title would be an Xbox exclusive. However, what wasn't actually stated there was what sort of exclusive it would be. Now, ideally, a lot of people would expect it to be a launch day exclusive or a timed exclusive of some sort, with titles being released on other platforms much later on. However, uh, a lot of fans took this to mean exclusive to the platform. First of all, this doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever. Uh, for Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics to make the decision to make the Rise of the Tomb Raider title an Xbox exclusive, they would be alienating a large sector of their market, that being the PlayStation and PC market. Now, looking back at the Tomb Raider sales figures from the and comparing them with Xbox, PlayStation and PC, it is clear to see that the Xbox sales themselves barely made up for a third of the sales with, when compared to PlayStation and PC sales together, and I'm talking about both the Xbox One and the Xbox 360. So this kind of move then becomes a very baffling thing for Square Enix to do. Ultimately, would the title really do all that well if it was an Xbox exclusive? One would say probably not, especially given that the Xbox currently is not the top selling platform in the market, PC being a large sector of it and PlayStation being possibly the largest sector that has actual fans of the franchise already. However, it does highlight a very distinct problem within the games industry at the moment. We've been noticing a trend with regards to marketing language and increasingly ambiguous language being used to market particular games. Now, of course, in the past, what you might expect with something that would be labeled exclusive is that, yes, indeed, it is exclusive to the platform. And it is this exact meaning that the word exclusive carries that was more than likely the reason it was used in such a manner in this particular post. Now, he could have very easily said anything from it being a timed exclusive or exclusive upon launch or anything else that would further clarify for the consumer exactly what all this was about. However, he chose to say instead that Rise of the Tomb Raider would be coming in during the holidays of 2015 and exclusively on Xbox, which of course would elicit a negative response from the customers who were expecting it to be on PlayStation or PC. Because obviously, that is exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like an Xbox exclusive title. And it is this exact ambiguity that they are playing on. Now, it could be argued that Microsoft had indeed paid for such a timed exclusive and indeed that Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix were contractually obliged not to say anything about a timed exclusive, lest it affect the actual sales of the Xbox One for whatever reason. However, it also does state that the title was exclusive to Xbox, and not specifically the Xbox One or the Xbox 360, so it could well indeed be both of the platforms. Again, a very ambiguous move, and it doesn't really state clearly what the direction was with this. However, today, in an interview with Eurogamer, Xbox's head, Phil Spencer, did actually come out and say that Rise of the Tomb Raider would be a timed exclusive only, and they did not purchase the rights to the franchise. Indeed, they had only brokered a deal for exclusive rights upon launch. So, of course, that lays those rumours to rest. The title will be coming to other platforms, however, it's coming first to the Xbox platform. Whether or not this means Xbox One or Xbox 360 it still remains to be seen, and how long the exclusivity will last is also up in the air, as it was stated that this exclusive deal does have a time limit, but it's not clear what that time limit actually is. Regardless, what this does mean for PC and PlayStation users is that you do not get the game upon launch, but frankly, who really cares about that? After all, all this is really going to do in the long run is actually hurt the overall sales of Rise of the Tomb Raider, albeit to a very minuscule amount. As the game launches on Xbox 360 or Xbox One, you can expect to be seeing a lot of gameplay footage and such being uploaded to Twitch or YouTube 
as people start jumping on the new game bandwagon. This inevitably happens any time a big title launches. Whether or not this hap will happen exactly to Tomb Raider uh, sequel or not still remains to be seen. However, given that it's launching early on these platforms, it does give other consumers a chance to take a look the at the game before they buy it. After all, you'd want to know if the game has any particular flaws, or whether it's just a flaw on that platform, or whether the game itself is any good to begin with. We never really know, but now with an exclusive launch on Xbox, players who are waiting for the game to come out on PC or on PlayStation can very well see the game before it launches on their preferred platform. And this could actually end up hurting the sales of the game overall, because if the game turns out to not be any good, guess what? People on PC or PlayStation are more than likely going to avoid buying it unless it comes out on sale or something. So this kind of highlights the idea that exclusivity of any third party title on any particular platform is always going to be a bad idea. I can understand the idea that launching exclusively on your own platform, for example, titles such as Little Big Planet being published by Sony onto the PlayStation as an exclusive title seems to make more sense. After all, given that you're publishing to your own platform, the developer more than likely will make sure it's as compatible as it can be to your platform and then an overall better experience for the player. It also will, will be coupled with lower cost because the development cost does not require it to factor in other, other platforms that the game should run on. It also opens up the idea that if other platforms, for example if Xbox wishes to purchase uh, rights to publish the Little Big Planet game onto the Xbox platform, they will have to pay for additional licensing fees to do so, thus meaning it's an overall win for Sony. This is a hypothetical situation, but it's highly likely that this is much better in this particular situation. When you factor in games published by other publishers, for example in this case Square Enix, all it's going to do is hamper their own profits by ensuring that launching on one platform only means that you only capture that particular percentage of the market. And in this case, for Xbox, it's not the majority of their fan base. Indeed, since the launch of the Tomb Raider reboot, the larger number of sales has been from the PlayStation. PlayStation 3 alone accounted for the largest proportion of sales, with the Xbox 360 close behind, and trailing, of course, would be PC. However, by comparing in the next-gen consoles as well, if you were to look at PS4 and Xbox One sales only, the version on the PlayStation 4 outsold the Xbox One by a massive margin. Something that could very well happen again with Rise of the Tomb Raider. One thing is for sure, the next-gen consoles still can't exactly win the same sort of sector of the market that the last-gen have, that being the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. And given that the PlayStation 3 already has the larger sector of the market, it then makes more sense for them to launch on both. It's not a case of PlayStation versus Xbox, it's just a case of multi-platform versus exclusive launch. And in this case, all that's going to happen is Square Enix being gimped. They're going to be launching on one platform only, and then they're going to end up with a third or so of the profit margin that they could possibly have which may or may not lead to an overall loss for the company as a result, given the development costs of the game to begin with. Of course, all of this is a hypothetical situation, and as we know now, it's only going to be a timed exclusive. And that means overall sales are still going to be right where they need to be because they're launching on multiple platforms. But it's clear to see exactly why this sort of system doesn't work. To this end, all I can really say is that, with the way that YouTube, Twitch, and the internet works overall with regards to games that are new releases and such. I really do hope that the money Microsoft paid for the exclusive launch was well worth it. Because ultimately, it is going to affect sales one way or another if the game is not that good. So let's hope Rise of the Tomb Raider is worth the money, and let's hope that it is shown in the best possible light when it launches on the Xbox next year. But what we can say for certain is that it is going to be a worrying trend if this continues within the games industry, with words being used in marketing in such an ambiguous manner with the intent of deliberately confusing the customers. And I frankly don't agree with that. So let's hope it stops. And that's all from me folks, thank you very much for watching. My name is Panzer, and I'll see you next time.